It was supposed to be a club game like any other, but when Santos met Vasco da Gama on November 19, 1969, the capacity crowd at Rio's Maracana Stadium was there to see just one thing. They wanted to see Pele score his 1,000th goal. With Santos playing in their away strip, the game was hard fought as usual, and as full time approached, Pele remained scoreless. It looked as though the game would remain locked at one all, and the Santos fans would have to wait to see history. But Pele was brought down. The referee pointed to the spot, and Pele became a legend. Brazil loved the man who had resisted the lure of big money to stay at home and play for his beloved Santos. He'd been at the club since he was 17. In 1958, he was part of the Brazilian national team that brought home the World Cup. And again in 1962. And again in 1970. Pelé was now moving beyond the sporting arena with prime ministers and presidents all wanting to meet him. Brazilian president Janio Quadros had already declared Pelé a national treasure. When the Queen of England visited Rio, she watched Pelé play in a friendly and presented him with a trophy. Brazilian playwright Nelson Rodrigues anointed Pelé the king, and it was not long before he was crowned in front of the cameras. Ultimately, he would receive the title Athlete of the Century from the International Olympic Committee. Santos was enjoying so much attention now, thanks to its star striker, that the team embarked on a series of exhibition matches which spread Pelé's fame even further and made him the world's most highly paid team sport athlete. In 1974, he announced his retirement, but in 1975, took a $7 million contract to play with the New York Cosmos, leading them to the championship two years later. Now European teams were keen to play Cosmos, and Pele did a huge amount to lift the profile of soccer in the United States. Finally, in 1977, after a friendly against his old team, Santos, where he actually played the first half for Cosmos and the second half for Santos, he announced his retirement. Uh, you know, I feel very, very, very sorry because I love soccer. And uh, it's uh, like a uh, part of my life I, I lost. But uh, uh, it's very important when you, you stop in good shape, when you can't stop in good shape. Um, of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss a lot. I'm gonna be around, I'm gonna stay in, in, in a nice state. I asked to the court if I can practice with the teammates sometimes. But uh, it's important you stop when you are in a good position. But Pele's retirement remained active as he started traveling the world, giving workshops and skills classes. And wherever he went, crowds would still turn out for a glimpse of the king. And presidents still wanted to meet the legend, whose reputation was not diminishing. President Bill Clinton was even keen to display his foot skills. In 1995, he was appointed a UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador, having already been asked to serve as a United Nations Ambassador for Ecology and the Environment. The reason Pelé remains prominent is not just because of past glory. He continues to work with young people around the world, not just teaching them skills, but respect for their opponent. He also speaks out for the improvement of conditions for the poor. The work he does now is just as important as his football career. You know, growing in a, in a soccer, in a, in a football, then I was there in Africa and South America. This I love to do.